Superman has had a very checkered history outside of comics. Reception of the films he is featured in are mixed to put it generously, and the games he gets are usually pretty bad. You have Superman on the Atari 2600, which is alright I suppose, but it definitely hasn't aged very well like most games on the 2600. Next up is Superman on the NES, which I don't even understand how to play honestly. Then we have Superman on the Genesis, which gets a bit closer to what a Superman game should be. But you die too easily, and it's kinda boring. The Death and Return of Superman, which oddly enough was developed by Blizzard, is okay. It's a simple side-scrolling beat-em-up with a selection of Superman to play as. Again, you are killed way too easily, and for some reason, the game doesn't have multiplayer. The most notorious game is Superman on Nintendo 64 which I won't even go into because you probably are already well aware of this game and how bad it is. Last up is Superman Returns, which makes me kinda sad because it almost works. You have all of Superman's abilities, an open world metropolis to explore, and the cast from the film reprising their roles. What doesn't work is the mandatory random crimes and events that if you ignore, it does significant damage to your health bar. And there's really boring combat. Also, the final boss is a tornado. But wait, there's another game that almost everybody's forgotten about. And you know what? It's actually kind of good. Released in 2002 for the PS2 and GameCube, Superman Shadow of Apocalypse was released to generally positive reviews. The game is based on the Superman animated series, much like the N64 game, which probably caused consumers to be cautious about the game resulting in lower sales. I used to see this game on the shelf at video stores pretty frequently but never rented it for some reason. Now that I have played it, I kind of regret not doing so. It's a really fun game. It features the cast of the series reprising their roles, with 40 minutes of CG animated cutscenes that still look pretty good. Graphically, the game still looks fine. It really helps that the show's art style translates really well to 3D. You have access to all of Superman's key abilities like heat vision, x-ray vision, super breath, and most importantly, flying. Let's briefly bring up Superman 64 again. The opening stages of that game revolved around learning the flying controls by going through rings. What makes it worse is that the flying never exactly works properly. You can hold and release the A button repeatedly to try and keep control, or hold it down and try and navigate while going top speed. In Shadow of Apocalypse, you are able to use the C stick to hover, and hold the R button down to maintain a certain pace. You always feel in control of Superman's movements. The combat, however, is very hit or miss. Punching guys feels alright, with most of them dying in about 3 hits, and using your heat vision is pretty sweet, but the combat is kinda boring, with some weird and sometimes unresponsive control issues that make it worse. The game did, however, seem to nail how Superman's health should work. It was perfectly balanced compared to the death and return of Superman and Superman Returns. This game is definitely the best Superman game I have played. It's similar to Batman Vengeance that came out a year earlier. It was an okay game that seemed to set the groundwork for the amazing Batman games that were to come. It kinda makes you wonder, why don't we have that amazing Superman game yet? <laughs> Let's quickly reflect on three of my favorite superhero games. Ultimate Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, and the Batman Arkham series. The first time I played Ultimate Spider-Man, I was blown away with how realistic and fun they made swinging building to building feel. I'm aware it was done in Spider-Man 2 a year earlier, but this game holds up a bit more to me. In Hulk Ultimate Destruction, I felt like a powerful monster that was able to crush anyone that tried to get in my way. And in the Arkham games, I feel, to put it simply, like I'm Batman. The common thread between all of these games is that they make you feel like the character you want to play as. 
The gameplay of each of them were refined over multiple games, especially in the 5th and early 6th generation of consoles. As much as I love Spider-Man on the PS1, it's nowhere near as good as the later games, but it does show the potential of what a great Spider-Man game could be, much like how Shadow of Apocalypse shows the potential for a better Superman game. A game I don't know if we'll get anytime soon. It's been over 10 years since the last solo Superman game has been released, and aside from the cancelled Factor 5 game codenamed Blue Steel, there hasn't been talk of a new title since. All of the pieces for a great Superman game are there for a developer to work with. All they need to do is work on how to make Superman's style of combat work the same way Rocksteady did for Batman. Some form of balance between Hulk's level of power and a variation of the free-flowing combat style from Arkham Asylum. The game would also need a fitting story with a worthy opponent. Why not base it off the Brainiac storyline from 2008? It's one of my favorite Superman stories, and it has great potential for a video game adaptation. I have high hopes that one day a developer will see the potential in a Superman game and produce something that's on par with the Arkham games. But until then, I guess we'll just have to get our fix from playing as the Man of Steel and Injustice. <laughs>